Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Suffer Alliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I hurt the Pathfinder School classroom area. What I wanted to show you today is I want to show you a very simple trap trigger that you can almost break sticks off the landscape and not have to do a whole lot of carving to accomplish it. And it works well for both snaring and for fishing. So what you're going to need is you're just going to need a stake that you can pound into the ground that will go deep enough that the spring pole won't pull the stake out of the ground. So something about a foot long and just carve a seven notch in that. Now, if you didn't have the ability to carve a notch for some reason, then you could always use something that had a small stick coming out of it like this and pound it in the ground upside down. But you're better off if you can pound a notch in there, okay? The next thing you need is just a straight stick, and this is gonna be your lever stick. And all I've done with this is I have carved a flat on one side, a little bit longer than the flat on the opposite side, so it has a flat on both sides and it's gonna sit in the trap like this. This will be pushing down, and this will be in the notch pulling upward, okay? Pretty simple concept. The next thing you need is a trigger stick, and that's gonna be just a simple Y. Again, you could pick it up off the ground, you could break it with your hands if you needed to. If you can carve it, you can make a little neater job of it. Now, this length here really dictates whether you're gonna use this for fishing or for snaring. If you're gonna use this for a snare, you would cut this shorter and point the end to put your bait on this fork so that they work the bait and that trips the trap. If you're going to use this for fishing, leave it a little bit longer and just put a notch in the end of the stick. Again, a seven notch will work fine or just something that you could carve in there really quick by scraping it with your finger. Something that's gonna hold the string on there so that when the string is pulled, it releases the trap, okay? The next thing we need is a good spring pole. We've got one right here beside us. I'm gonna show you how to attach a string to this pole and we'll talk about how to set this up in components and how it works both ways. I'm going to use some orange mason line for this instead of bank line today so that you can see better what I'm doing. I've left it on the roll at this point, and I've just tied a double overhand stop knot in one end. And all we're going to do with that is we're going to take a bite of that line, and we're going to turn a lark's head in, in it like this. And what's going to happen is when we draw that down on the stick, we're going to work that knot until it's hung inside just like this to create a stop knot on the stick. So basically those ears that you create and that stop knot become a hitch around that stick. So you just make a couple ears big enough to go over the stick. When you put the stick through and you draw everything down tight, you just wanna work it down and then work it to the knot and that will hold it. This spring pole doesn't have to be strong enough to rip a fish out of the lake and throw them up in the trees. It just needs to be strong enough to set a hook. If you're using this for snaring, it needs to be strong enough to lift the animal off the ground once he's in the snare. So if you're trying to snare a rabbit or a squirrel or something like that, something fairly springy and fairly thick like broom handle length is going to be fine. That may be a little bit too much for fish, but again, that's going to depend on what you're fishing for as well. If you're fishing for catfish well offshore, this is just ticket right here or turtles, things like that. If you're fishing for bluegill close to the bank, this thing is going to sling them clear out of the water. All right. So we're going to take this string, we're going to get a bite in it. We're going to turn it over so that we have a set of ears just like this. I'm going to drop this over the stick and we're going to draw it down so that the knot jams and locks in place. And that's going to be the beginning. Now, again, we left this string on the line for a reason, so we could not cut it until we need to. What we want to accomplish here is we want to put a stake in the ground that is pretty much at a 90 degree angle to the spring pole. So we'll take our stake and we'll just drop it down here right below the spring pole and we'll drive it in the ground with some type of mallet and we'll leash our string for a minute. And we'll just grab a mallet off the ground or some kind of a stick for a baton. And we're gonna drive this in the ground so that the notch is this direction or this direction with the water facing out that way or a game trail coming into the trap coming from this direction. So we're actually at an angle to that. All right, our notch is here, either wide, either side, and this is our snare, we're going to the water. So we'll get this hammered in so it can't come out. And I'm gonna drive that thing down until it's about four inches from the ground. And that's gonna be dictated really by the height of this. So when I put this on the ground next to it, I want it hammered in there 
so that it's almost the same height as this. Now I wanna walk through attaching this stick to this line because everything I do, I do with recovering my cordage in mind. I try to be able to recover any cordage I can. So if this is the spot where I want this lever stick to rest, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that line and I'm gonna create a marlin spike hitch. So I'm basically just turning the line over and going up the line and pulling a loop through and that creates a marlin spike hitch, okay? Just like this. But I want a more secure connection than that, even though all of the pressure is going down and it's not going to move, if it springs, I want it to stay in there. I don't want to lose the stick. So in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to go right back up that line with that marlin spike hitch, except this time I'm going to pull that thing down till it turns to a slip. And I'm going to make this loop large enough that I can actually make a lark's head knot with that loop by turning it over on those ears again, putting my stick in, turning it facing the knot, and pull everything down tight. And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna draw both of those loops down on that line, right to the top, just like that, and it's not gonna come undone, all right? Even if it flips around, it's not gonna loosen up like a Marlin spike hitch would if it wasn't under tension. However, I can slide that right off the end of the stick when I'm done, and it will all come out of the line. And so I've recovered that cordage completely. So again, I'm gonna make a Marlin spike hitch and I'm gonna pull it through. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it down to a slip knot. I'm gonna make it big enough that I can put a lark's head in that loop. And I'm gonna put that lark's head right around the end of my stick with the flat facing toward the top and tighten everything down on top of that flat, just like that. Scoot back just a little bit toward the end there. Perfect. Now, I've got my lever stick attached. Okay, once we have all of that done, we can then draw this down into that seven notch. And I like to just hold it in place at my finger and make sure nothing's trying to twist on me too bad. If things are trying to twist, if I can't hold that with my finger and it not come out, then something's wrong. If I can hold it with my finger, then I can come in here and put my trigger stick in. And I'm still holding it with my finger to make sure that nothing's gonna move while I'm doing this. Okay, now that we have this set up, one of two things has to happen. This is either gonna be our bait stick if we're gonna put bait in the trap, or it's gonna be going to the line It's gonna be essentially our fishing pole that when the tip flops down, it releases the trap. And it's very, very sensitive. I'll show you that in a minute. Now we need to either put a snare loop around this that would be out in here if we're going to use this to catch an animal with and then fence it off so you can only come in to the trap from one direction. Or we need a fishing line going out to the water straight out from the bank. So we're gonna need a connection loop here. So what I would generally do is I would come up in here pretty close and I would tie a double overhand knot in this thing just to give myself a loop. So I'd come in here and I'd go through once, twice with that loop and I'd give myself a big enough loop there that I could do a loop to loop connection easy enough if I needed to. And then I would trim off this tag end right here. So we'll disconnect this trap and we'll cut that off. Now we're gonna take a length of line and we're gonna simulate a fishing trap. So to do that, we have to attach a fishing line to this. So if this is our fishing line going to the water, and we're just simulating that right now that this has got a hook on the other end with bait on it. And we're going to come up here and we're gonna to have to do a loop to loop connection here. So to do that, we're just going to take this loop and shove it through. And then we're going to bring this up through the loop just like this, and that's going to create a square knot right there for a loop-to-loop -loop connection. It'll come off really easy if we need it to, but it'll stay on there and won't come undone when we get a fish on there. And it's now connected to our spring pole. Okay, now, once we have that loop-to-loop -loop connection there and it's solid, now we just need to connect our line to our fishing pole which is basically this little short stick right here. Overhand, 
overhand, one behind the other, makes a clove hitch, drop that over the line and tighten it down. Doesn't need to be super tight, just like this, okay? Now, this line goes to the water. Any movement of that line, once it's out in the water, is going to release this trap. Okay, now that we've done our fishing situation, now we can do the same thing by turning this string here into a snare. So all we need to do is figure out how big that loop needs to be around this object. And again, we can lay it right over top of this. So don't sweat that any, all right? Figure out how big your snare needs to be to get outside of this. And again, we'll cut this stick off now and we'll make this shorter as if it were a bait stick. So now all we've done is we've connected a snare loop to this line. And we've done that with a poacher's loop, which is just a loop in the line. And again, all we've done is put a lark set in that that will self-tighten on the line. And now we just need to lay this in here, just like this. We need to make sure that we've got it back far enough here and out far enough here that the animal's inside that loop when he works the bait. And we can pin that down if we want to. Again, we're using a fairly small loop here for demonstration, but it doesn't have to be much bigger than this for a small animal. He just has to have basically his front feet in here when he's chewing on this bait and he's gonna get hung in that snare, okay? And it's gonna self-tighten on him and it's not going to come loose very easy once it tightens because you got that double knot in there. See, I'm moving around trying to loosen that and it won't come undone because it's under tension. But that would have picked that animal up at least a foot off the ground. 